Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to actually work on introducing what science actually is. So we've covered the safety stuff, now we're moving on to this. Well, to define science, let's get the definition. So science is just testing claims based on evidence. So there's actual uh, concrete proof or evidence or things to show that my claim can be true or false. It can be one way or the other. Uh, so that's science. So if I make the claim that the world is round, or a sphere, I should say, well, there are lots of tests I can do. There's lots of evidence that I can gather to show that my claim is correct. And likewise, if I say, make a claim that the Earth is flat, well, that's something I can still test. That's still testable. It just won't... Um, the test that I run will show that that's not true. So it, it's still testable and it just might not be correct. Uh, pseudoscience, on the other hand, is just a claim that you can't really test or you can't uh, gather evidence to, to prove. So um, if I were to tell you your future or um, using uh, astrology, the one where they have zodiac signs or whatever, like telling your personality based on the stars. Well, the stars have been there for millions, billions of years. Some of them aren't even there anymore. We're just seeing the light of the remainder of them. So there's, it really has no actual proof that those things will come true. And there's no way to test that it is or is not true. So that's pseudoscience versus science where you can actually test it. Uh, another example of pseudoscience is phrenology or phrenology. A uh, hundred years ago, maybe less, uh, people were saying that they could read the bumps on your head and tell you whether you're going to be good at volleyball or at soccer or if you're going to get a scholarship or if you're uh, good at drawing or photography or any of this other stuff just by bumps on your head, which is ridiculous. That has nothing to do with uh, your future or um, your your brain capacity or whatever it's just you know oh I got dropped in my head there and or I got hit by a golf ball I don't know who knows uh, it, there's just no proof and so making that claim you can't test that that's uh, it's not something that you can actually gather evidence on so it's pseudoscience now real science science is always going to be based on the most current information so new things are happening new things are discovered all the time. So this example here is just like what I said earlier is that yeah people used to think the world was flat but based on new evidence, new discoveries, we know that it's now a sphere. So we went out into space, we uh, use all these other kinds of tests that allow us to know that. And this other one is uh, the scientists claimed that they came up with uh, cold fusion uh, it's a different kind of nuclear power that would use a lot less radiation or produce a lot less radiation. So uh, they said that they have done this, but at the same time, they wouldn't, uh, they couldn't reproduce the results, and no other scientists could either. So they were essentially lied to the scientific community, and it was just really bad. So we have to be very careful about what we believe and um, making sure that it's legitimate and that it's testable and verified. So, an example, why do earthquakes happen? Well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, initially, oh, it must be that the gods are unhappy, and that's what people used to believe. And so they would, you know, make sacrifices and stuff to try and appease them. But we got some new information and decided that it was, you know, it was probably actually something to do with the ground because uh, Chinese, the Chinese culture actually developed this urn that was able to detect when an earthquake was going to happen like an hour or two beforehand, which is really awesome, especially at that time. Um, so they decided that, you know, it's something with the ground. And then they got even more information. And so even today, we know that it's the plates are shifting, the tectonic plates. And you know what, the, if we find some more information, we can actually change that idea. So it's always developing, always changing. So this chart is actually something really cool. It tells us 
uh, different examples of what science is and what pseudoscience is. So the left column, science, is a willingness to change with new evidence, just like what we said earlier. Once we get new data, we get that new uh, perspective. We're not going to be fixed on that one. We're not going to say, oh no, it is definitely the gods are angry, or oh, it's, you know, uh, something to do with, you know, telling your future, whatever, that's a fixed idea. Uh, but we have evidence to show that it is otherwise. So the world's not flat, it's a sphere because we have evidence. Um, peer reviewed, like uh, the people, hold on, let's go back to these guys right here. It wasn't able to get viewed by other scientists because they couldn't rep reproduce it. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not peer reviewed, whereas this one, pseudoscience, you're just going to believe it even if someone else hasn't double checked it. So science, you're going to get reviewed by other scientists. It needs to be true for everywhere, that sort of thing, whereas this is not. Science also takes into account all new discoveries. So uh, instead of just taking the ones that make your belief make sense. So if I say, well, the ground is flat, and as far as I can see, it's flat. Therefore, the Earth is flat. Well, that's true. Those observations are true. Uh, but there are other facts showing that, yes, the world is curved. And that um, that isn't the whole picture. Science, if you can prove a claim incorrect, you better have ability to back up that claim. And with science, so saying that, you know what, the Earth isn't flat, well, at the time, that's what everyone believed, and so unless you can be like, oh, well, a ship sailing away is going to disappear, and will able to be, will be able to reappear just by turning around, it's because the Earth is curved. So that's actual, you know, criticism backed up by evidence, whereas if I were to say that Bigfoot isn't real, well, people that are into pseudoscience or just uh, not scientists will think that I'm trying to hide Bigfoot or that um, we've already found Bigfoot and the government's trying to hide them from them. It's a conspiracy or uh, they get really defensive. That's pseudoscience. Verifiable results, that's pretty much the same as up here, that it's peer-reviewed um, and that other people have already reviewed it and told us that it works. Um, whereas pseudoscience, you might be able to do it once, but never again. Or someone will say that they did it and not want to do it again, or something like that. Science uh, limits the claims of usefulness. So with pseudoscience, they might be trying to sell a product that'll um, cure boils and uh, get rid of colds and make your hair grow all at the same time. It's just kind of a broad... Uh, it's going to cure everything, and that's not that's not likely to happen. Whereas, uh, if I say that taking this um, medicine or something, you're going to uh, take down a fever, or it's going to make your skin turn purple. I don't know, but it'll do one thing and one thing alone versus everything. And then accurate measurement. So I'm going to say that the world is this. Um, big. It has this circumference, this diameter, that sort of stuff. Whereas this is like, oh, it'll go until, you know, it falls off the edge at the Bermuda Triangle. I don't know. Something like that. It's just not going to be as accurate as this. Or if I'm trying to sell a medicine, um, like an herbal medicine or whatever the um, non-scientific stuff is, uh, and I say that you know, it'll make your hair grow back uh, very soon, or, you know, it's not going to give you an exact timeline. So that sort of thing is pseudoscience versus science. So let's go ahead and stop right there uh, for part one of Intro to Science.